Can you talk a little bit more about Sherman Hemsley, just what he was like? and what Sherman he was, like? was an uh, extrovert when he's performing. I remember when we first did a scene, and I said, God, he's an introvert in real life. Now he's learning to mix the two. But when we first did the scene, I said, is that all he's going to give me, you know? We hit that stage, and boy, he took off. And I said, oh, OK. <laughs> so we fed off of each other very well, our energies. Whatever he'd do, he'd come in sometimes, <laughs> he'd say, Marla, I, I don't remember lines. I said, Sherman, you know the lines. Your mind took a picture of them. You said them three times. Stop telling yourself you don't know the lines. You don't know them because you keep telling yourself that they're in there. So. I tell you what, I say something, just say something about what I said. I said, and when you say something, when your lips stop moving, I'll stop talking. And that's how we operated. And sometimes, Shimmer would be talking so fast, we wouldn't know what the heck he said. And it was hysterical. And we, we'd have to stop and crack up laughing, you know. But when I watch the show, Sherman is timing is perfect. I think I'm talking fast, and I'm slow. And I realize that tape retards the timing a little. It, it slows it down for some reason. I don't know why. But Sherman is the one who's perfect. I said, how did he do that? You know, we, we would all be laughing. But Sherman, uh, very, he's very, very gifted and very generous actor. You can't hit a person if they don't set you up. And he set me up so that I could crack on him all the time. So I have to say, Sherman is the reason my character worked so well. Can you talk a little bit about uh, Isabel Sampson? Isabel was the queen, your liege. They call her your liege, and I call her your leche. Florence would mess up anything <laughs> that she was saying. And Isabel was really the star of the show. Isabel would have been a Florence, but that wasn't her role on the show, because Isabel was a comedian, and she loved doing comedy. But she was now the star of the show, and her role was to make, to bring all of us together, which she did very well. But she's a very funny lady, and uh, she liked to eat pork. Her children, like one of her sons, was a Muslim, did not like for her to eat pork. And so she told a story where she came home one day and he had thrown out the bacon and the ham. <laughs> and she said, if you see a pig standing in my living room, walk around him. <laughs> so we'd all laugh about that. But she was a, a lot of fun. Um, Zara, Zara Cooley? Zara? Yeah. Zara was originally an actress from the time she was 18. And she brought her book in. She had done so much stuff. She was billed as Dame Zara Cully. And she was a delight. And uh, we all missed her. But she was very funny. And her timing was just great, just the way she would deliver a line. She would say some, you know, she would always be on Sherman's side. And uh, so she said, you, know, you need, don't need a maid with this itty bitty house. She says, well, your son is the one that wants me to have it. She says, well, on the other hand. <laughs> and she just had a great way of doing that. Um, I guess he needs someone to help keep the house clean for a change. And she had a way of, of just breaking these sentences up that was just perfect. She was a lot of fun. Can you say a word about Roxy Roper, too? Roxy, uh, that was my pal. Roxy was such a class act. And, and of course, raising Lenny. Lenny was on the set when he was a kid. And then I was back and forth in their house. We had, she had, gave a lot of parties, and a lot of people gathered with them. She had a wonderful, wonderful demeanor. And she was a, uh, an actress from New York. She had done stage and won. And they switched to her because she was in an interracial relationship. I think that's why Norman wanted her for the role, because someone else had it when they were doing it, uh, the pilot, on uh, All in the Family. 
But when we came to do the first show, he had hired Roxy by then with Franklin. And um, watching uh, Lenny grow up was great. Uh, Roxy and I, Roxy would take me anytime she wanted to do something. She had to have me as her partner in crime. So she decided she wanted to do tennis. So she found somebody, Oscar Robertson, who had been a great tennis player. And, and I lived in Inglewood, so we went over to the park, Centinella Park, and we would be doing tennis. But of course, our whole thing was running after the balls because we kept missing the ball. Why? <laughs> I said, how come this racket can't hit this little bitty ball? So he was teaching us how to turn the racket and how to do this. So we spent a lot of time together. And then she decided she wanted to go to um, work out. So she went to Gold's, Green, uh, Gold's Gym in Venice. And she talked me into going out there. So we got trainers and we were out there doing lifting weights and doing all of this. And uh, Roxy was great. <laughs>